Welcome to another electrifying video. Today we're here with Pat who brought his uh, 1964 Rambler and the reason why I wanted to introduce it to you is because he opted for quite unusual solutions for the drivetrain and to modernize the whole car. So let's check it out. All right, today we're here with Patrick and his 64 Rambler. I want to know everything about it and it looks fantastic. I've never seen this setup, so please tell us exactly why you chose this base car and why you went for this uh, drivetrain option. Tell us everything. So, at heart, I'm a Rambler guy. This is my ah. fifth Rambler. I love Ramblers and I love electric cars and I only have so much garage space, so you have an electric Rambler. So this is my favorite body style, my favorite year. It's a 1964 Rambler Classic 660, two-door sedan. And this originally uh, actually came from Texas, which is where we are now. But this car had, had nothing on it. It had an automatic transmission and that was it. It didn't even have a radio or reverse lights. And it wasn't in the greatest shape and it barely ran. So it was a perfect candidate to restore and remodel. And what I've done is I've added a drivetrain from a Lexus GS450H. So it is a Toyota dual motor, uh, dual electric motor transmission, but more importantly, it's a rear wheel drive transmission. So I was able to put it in the transmission tunnel just like the original transmission was, but with this one, I didn't want to keep the original transmission because it just wasn't very good. And this connects to a regular drive shaft and goes to a regular rear wheel drive. So that's really a perfect component to use for rear wheel drive cars. Was it easy to source? Can you find them easily? They actually are pretty easy to yeah. find and they're fairly cheap. So you can generally find one of those in the state shipped to you for you know, less than a thousand dollars. And it's about a 250 horsepower motor depending on the voltage you put through it. So that brings us to the next component. Battery pack, inverter, how did you uh, source those? So what I was driving at the time was a Mercedes B250E and that is a small compact that uh, Tesla actually provided the motor and the batteries for. So these are Tesla batteries out of a Mercedes B-Class. Okay. It's 36 kilowatt hours and they're very long skinny batteries and they're 12 battery modules. So they've got six here in this box in front and then you've got an identical box pretty much uh, with another six batteries that fit between the frame rails in the back where the gas tank used to hang. So you did build the battery pack yourself? Um, I, I, well, I mean, I, I, I bought it, actually it was already disassembled, the module, so that I had the module shipped to me and then I just sort of separated it and, and put it together like that. But I did build the boxes and, and okay. you know, they are liquid cooled like most Tesla, like I think pretty much all Tesla batteries, so they did the liquid cooling loop and the BMS wiring and all of that sort of stuff. Did you opt for uh, uh, rapid charging then? I did not do rapid charging, but that was just an added complexity that I didn't really feel I needed for what I wanted to use this for. Okay. And honestly, I've been driving electric cars for like 15 years now and I've never once fast charged one. So you typically charge at home all the time. Yeah, absolutely. What type of range do you get from those uh, battery packs? So the original Mercedes that was rated for 87 miles in the city, uh, it did have a it did have a, a range button you could push that would charge it up a little fully so it'd get about 100 miles. This car is, I'm sure, less efficient and certainly less aerodynamic, but it's also lighter than the original Mercedes. Oh, is it? Yeah. So I'm expecting to get about the same range. I would say 80, 85 miles. Okay. But I haven't yeah. actually driven it that far yet. Okay. So you just finished uh, the build? Uh, I've been driving it, but I, you know, like I said, I, I, it's this is my run around town okay. car, so I think the most miles I've ever put on it at one time is maybe ten. Was it well received in in the community of people restoring this uh, 64? So type? I would say in in the EV community, absolutely, yeah. people love it. Uh, in the Rambler community, it's hit or miss. You know, with classic cars, you always have those diehard people that say they want it completely original, don't touch it. Um, but this car was not in good shape, you know, and this this car needed to be redone. And so you, you saved it. Pretty much, yeah. I, I not only saved it, but I completely modernized it. You know, like I said before, it only had a automatic transmission. Well, now it has smart entry system. It has power windows, power locks, power brakes. You know, it's a it's a Bosch i booster, electric brake booster. It has uh, air conditioning and uh, electric heating. It has. Um, ventilated and heated cool uh, leather seats out of a Mustang. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it has a heads up display. It, it, I mean, it's it's just so much nicer and so much more better equipped than it used to be. Do you take other components from the Mustang? I see wheels. What else did you up for? So the only thing I really have from the Mustang are the wheels, uh, the front seats and the uh, rear axle is out of a Mustang because this car originally had a torque tube. So since I took out the transmission, I couldn't use the rear end. Right, let's have a look inside also. Sure. 
Well, the finish looks fantastic. Do you do this? Is it your main job? Uh, is it uh, none of this is, is my main job. I actually work in a payroll office, but uh, I do, like I said, I do love Ramblers. A lot of what you see is original or at least original equipment. Mm -hmm. So like the window switches, these are correct for a 64 Rambler. The dashboard is predominantly correct, although I did add some wood inlay in the trim to match the wood inlay in the center console. And so the center piece, obviously all of this is kind of new, um, but the back seat is original. I just had the back seat recovered to match the design of the front seat. Added the speakers, of course, added a lot of the lights. There's, you can't really see it at the moment, but there's ambient lighting in the door handles and ambient lighting under the dash. And, uh, you know, like I said, you've got heating and cooling. You've got a custom display here uh, that gives you a lot of information about the, the, um, the battery pack and the system It's not on at the moment, but, and, you know, a new stereo system. And um, one of the really interesting things that I did is I have a Restomod Air HVAC system and it, has, it takes a lot of five volt inputs for things like how fast the fan blows or what direction uh, the fan is blowing and all of that. And I actually used the original levers that were part of the, the HVAC system in Rambler and these actually drive cables. So now these cables will move slide potentiometers and feed those zero to five volt signals into the HVAC system. So I can set the temperature, I can set the direction, I've got the fan speed. And then this is where the original key would have gone. And I just have a, you know, an on off key there now. So, you know, you touch your foot in the brake and it lights up, you, small, you turn yeah. the car on. And the original fuel gauge it does give you a pretty good indication of what the uh, you know, state of charge is as well. Perfect. Uh, let's go back to the drivetrain. We've talked about the batteries. We've talked about the motor. What about the inverter uh, charger? So the inverter is Lexus as well. Okay. That comes, uh, that is matched with the transmission and it's out of a, a Lexus GS450H. But I do have a Stealth EV combo 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger and a one and a half kilowatt DC DC converter here. It is liquid cooled. Uh, so I've got two different coolant loops here. I have one specifically for the batteries. So this goes to the front box and the back, back box. And this comes on, you know, based on battery temperature, it'll, it'll run coolant through the, through the radiator here. And then I have one uh, loop that is just for the electronics. So this runs through the charger, DC-DC, yep. and then it runs through the inverter, which is down underneath. And then it runs through the transmission because there is actual liquid cooling for the two electric okay. motors. And the high voltage junction box here, I, you know, this I made myself. Um, you've got kind of lights on here uh, that will tell you which one of the contactors are closed when it's turned on. And the heat has its own contactor. Uh, and then of course you've got all the, you know, all of the other connections here. I tried to make everything as safe and as professional as possible. You know, you've got- It looks very professional. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You've got orange for all high voltage, you yeah. know, which is standard. And anything that's low voltage is, is black looms or, or red for the battery. But so we were saying, yeah, this looks very professional um, and you've been driving electric cars for a long time. Is it your first conversion? And is it, it is. something you will be doing in the future? I don't know that I'll do another one. Uh, it is not my first conversion. I did one back in 2008 and that was before people really started using lithium, like they was just starting to talk about it. So that actually was a lead acid battery conversion, mm -hmm. um, but it was much less involved. It was a more modern car. I just bolted a motor to the transmission. So it was a much less okay. involved conversion. What was the, the main challenge uh, building this conversion? I think probably the metal fabrication because I had to learn to weld and some of the fabrication, it, it's mostly stuff that's hidden, fortunately, uh, but metal fabrication is not, not my forte. So, uh, <laughs> so even though I actually built the mounts to put in the, the rear end because it didn't, you know, it's a different rear end than what was there originally, yeah. I ended up taking that to a professional and having them redo okay. it to make it just stronger and a little better. How long did it take from the day you bought the car uh, to finishing it? Oh, it was a good, it was a good two, two and a half years. Yeah. But keep in mind that the body shop had the car itself for 10 months, so. Okay, so the actual conversion was more like a year or so? Well, yeah. I mean, I would say I was still the same time because okay. I was working on other oh, things, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. I was working on the coating and, and things like that and other components while they were working on the body. So if you were to redo the same uh, build, what would you change, what would you keep? Uh, I think I would make the, you know, certainly I, there's things I've learned about the different components. So the wiring would be a lot cleaner, I think, in a new one. Um, and I think I would also simplify it. This one, I really wanted to do uh, all of the modern conveniences and, and make it as simple as, as um, luxurious, if you will, as mm -hmm. possible. 
And I think if I did another one, I would concentrate more on the actual looks of the car and make it just simpler. Okay. And you would still go for the same powertrain? Probably not. I'd probably do uh, one of the Tesla small drive units and just do it in the back where you don't even have a, you, you know, wouldn't even have a drive shaft or any of that. And that would give you a lot more room in the front for yeah. batteries. And um, the, 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 the back is completely empty. You still have the full trunk space. As I do have the full before. trunk yeah. space. Uh, there is a battery box, but it's underneath the trunk where the gas tank was. So it's not taking up any space in the trunk. Is it an option you will do again? If you had to redo it, would you choose to put the battery pack underneath the, the boot floor? I think it really just depends on what batteries I used. Yeah. One of the reasons I did that was because these particular batteries are really long. Yeah. And you can see they actually stick out to here. They stick out past the radiator support. And my original hope was to just put two stacks of them and put them all where the engine was. But I just didn't have room for that. So if I think if I used a different form factor of batteries that would fit in the front, I probably wouldn't use them in the back. And some of the things that I have up here, like the charger, would have gone back there. Okay. All right. You know, there were a lot of little things that I added design-wise and function-wise. added, you know, electric motors. I added, you know, electric uh, washer fluids. Uh, and there's a lot of little design cues that I added that I wanted to keep the car as original as possible, but still make it, you know, very modern. So like, while these are original uh, mirrors, optional mirrors, I've changed out the glass. So now that when you turn the turn signals on, there's actually turn indicators in the glass itself. And little things like I added here, you can see a momentary switch because it has a smart entry system. So just like a modern car, if you do is walk up with the fob in your pocket, push the button and it locks and unlocks the cars. I added things like period correct uh, detailing, but that wasn't really on the original car. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, I actually think one of the best looking parts of this car is, is the ornamentation on the back. So this part is all original. Because it does have two motors, this is a Tesla dual motor badge. And the 63 Ramblers did have uh, the trim numbers on the trunk. And I just added the little E for a 660E. And you can see this is actually off of a Hyundai. So I do have reverse camera here. And that just, you know, works just like a normal reverse camera. So what advice would you give to someone willing to do something similar? I think just do your research and uh, make sure you understand what you're getting yourself into. <laughs> and whenever you have a budget for any kind of project, you know, increase it by 25% right <laughs> off the top. And then you're probably still going to go over budget there. We haven't covered the rack top. Was it an original equipment? So this was not, and this was not an option. But uh, I, I, one of the things I disliked about a lot of the original uh, electric cars that came out is you could never get a sunroof in any of them. And uh, so it's just something I wanted to add. This was actually one of the easier things to put in the car. Okay. <laughs> is it a, a, an aftermarket unit? It or, is yeah. an aftermarket unit. You can get them in all kinds of sizes and in different colors if you want. And even the inside, you can change the, uh, the fabric on the inside if you want. Okay. The standard kind of matched my, my headliner, so it was fine. All right, Patrick, it, it's a fantastic build. Uh, congratulations. Uh, look forward to seeing it at the shows next year, and maybe we'll take it for a spin. All right, thanks a lot.